So today I wanted to talk about the command system in Mercedes-Benz. A lot of people have been struggling with it. Um, this is the central display where we can control navigation, audio, phone, video, and system settings. Command stands for cockpit management and data. And it is controlled via this command controller. This command controller we can turn like a dial we can slide it forward, back, left, and right. And we do also have a back button along with a clear button. So in this review, we will talk about using this controller. And again, when I uh, refer to forward, I'm meaning clicking up, back, or down, and again, left, right. And we can also depress the wheel again along with turning it like a dial. So as you can see, the navigation, I like to think of it as in three separate parts. The top menu, navigation, audio, phone, video, and system, those will never change. Those are your five main categories. The middle portion of the screen is what I refer to as the content, and below that is what I refer to as the sub-menu. So when you are in navigation, for instance, you do have guide, traffic, position, and destination. And by toggling back and forth, simply all I am doing is just turning the wheel and for instance if I want to go from the bottom sub menu to the middle content I just slide the wheel forward or up uh, that'll get me to the full screen I can depress that and that'll show me a complete full screen of the map otherwise click the button one more time that'll bring me back to this main menu mode so again if I want to go up to where it says navigation audio phone video and system click once to get to the middle portion and click again up and that'll take me to navigation audio phone video and system and again just by turning the wheel I'm toggling from those five different choices so for instance if I want to go to audio simply click down on audio it'll take me to where I was in audio last which happens to be the FM player I'm currently I'm in 95.9 and as you can see the middle portion of the screen is the content and on the bottom you will see radio presets info FM and sound those are my sub categories in the FM or audio screen here so for instance if I want to change anything in the sound I simply click on sound and this is where I can change the treble bass balance and fade and turn on or off the logic 7 surround system so for instance if I want to click on treble and adjust that I simply turn the dial increase or decrease as I wish. Hit the button or push down on the command controller to select that and to go back to the prior screen I can simply pull back or pull down click on the back button and that'll take me right back to where I was. As you'll see we are currently in the audio screen um, and as you'll see on the top the audio screen is depressed and you will see that little triangle that means I'm in audio, but if I click on audio again, that'll show me all the different audio sources. On this 2011 E-Class, I do have AM, FM radio, satellite radio, six disc changer. It's capable of reading a memory card. The music registry, that's the hard drive of the vehicle. This vehicle is equipped with navigation. The navigation information is read off the hard drive. Uh, Mercedes-Benz sets aside a little bit of space for you to actually record music. Record music right from your CDs into the vehicle. We can stream music via Bluetooth. Media interface, that's going to refer to our iPod capabilities. We can actually plug the iPod right into the glove box and we'll be able to control the iPod using the vehicle's controls or the command system. And we do also have a separate auxiliary input. So again, by turning the wheel, I can select any one of these functions. Um, as I noted before, by the command controller, the left hand button is the back button. I can depress that and that'll take me back to where I need to go. Uh, phone, once you do have your phone paired, and we will have a separate video on how to pair a phone, um, but once you do have your phone paired, simply click on phone and you will be able to ultimately view your contact list and uh, manually dial if you elect to do so. Video, the vehicle is capable of playing a video or a DVD but only when the vehicle's in park you are not able to watch a DVD while going down the road. And system, this is where we are going to make system settings. For instance, we can adjust the time. Um, and if we go to settings, this is where we can 
tailor a few different settings of the vehicle the way you may wish to have them. This is where we can turn on or off Bluetooth. We can turn on or off the rear view camera. So for instance, when I put the vehicle into reverse, the rear view camera does turn on. Um, I can override that and turn that off. Uh, language, we can change the language if necessary. Voice control. For people that are into uh, utilizing the voice control, this is a great step to do. Uh, basically, the individualization, the vehicle will ask you to repeat a bunch of different commands. That way it gets familiar with your voice, accents, so on and so forth. So that is something I would recommend if you are going to do the voice control or voice instructions. Text reader speed. This is an interesting concept. You can actually change uh, the speed in which the vehicle talks back to you in terms of any information you had input. So for instance, if you were setting a destination and you wanted to go to Florida or Wisconsin or Texas, when you put in Texas, that's the speed in which the lady will basically repeat uh, the information that you entered in. That's the text reader speed. And then display, we can change a couple different modes. Right now I have my vehicle in automatic, so depending upon the amount of light out there, it'll toggle between day mode and night mode. Day mode is just a little bit bright. Night mode, as you can see, it kind of dims a little bit. I tend to leave mine in automatic, and it'll adjust accordingly. Okay, so going back to navigation, I guess that's the main system in which people are wanting to learn about. So as soon as I click on navigation, it's going to automatically bring up the map um, and then defaults me right down to destination. Quite frankly, the destination spot in the submenu, that's the one you're going to use most of the time. By clicking on destination, this is where we can go enter an address, uh, view an address from memory, uh, see some of our last destinations. POIs, those are points of interest. And we can also pick out a destination using the map. By clicking on there, it'll give you the crosshairs, and you can kind of scroll forward, back, up, and down, kind of interact with the map and find a spot in which you'd wish to go to, and then it'll give you step-by-step -step instructions from there on how to get there. So the main thing is going to be to enter an address. Most people want to know how to do that. So you're going to just select on enter an address, and it automatically defaults me to Wisconsin because that's where I'm at. But if we wanted to go to a different state, basically go to the states here, and we can narrow down the 50 states by using the alphabet. So if we wanted to go to Texas, for instance, we start with T, and as you can see, it's starting to narrow down all the states um, that begin with T. There's only two of them, Tennessee or Texas, so we click on Texas. Then we could simply enter in a city or town and you're just going to want to narrow down the city or town using the alphabet and as you can see it'll start to narrow them down after a while so for instance we want to go to Dallas so again I'm just narrowing down Dallas by using the alphabet and as you can see it's doing the same up there so once I have enough information entered in in terms of using the alphabet I can slide this forward pulls up all the entries in which we had narrowed down so far I can click on Dallas we can even enter a street, even a house number, and we could save that. So if, for instance, if you wanted to put in your home address, you could save your home address. Otherwise, we just go to start. The route is being calculated. Please proceed to the highlighted route. So Dallas, Texas is approximately 903 miles from here. Um, it's saying I'm off map road because I'm actually in a driveway right now. But once I got onto the street, it would give me step-by-step -step instructions how to get there. Uh, interesting thought, too is if you want to adjust the gal's volume, the, the voice in which is giving you the instructions, you can only adjust her voice when she is talking to you. And if you want to mute her voice, you can mute her voice by hitting the mute button only when she is talking. If you want to cancel the destination, simply click down, go back to destination, and you want to cancel route guidance. Guide, traffic, and position here in Wisconsin, not utilized a whole lot. Guide is going to search for any points of interest. As you can see, there is nothing available on the map. Traffic is going to show you any traffic messages. That is only done via the Sirius satellite radio signal. Um, I currently do not have satellite radio activated in here, so I am not going to get any traffic information. And position, 
we could save the vehicle position in which we are currently at. But again, talking about the under the destination subcategory, the other main category I like to talk about is the points of interest. We can search for a point of interest in a number of ways. The two most popular ways would be from our current position. So where the vehicle is currently at, we can search for a point of interest, such as uh, airport, amusement park, uh, ATM machine, beach, border crossing. You can see it as we're toggling through there. So for instance, if I wanted to find the nearest hospital, I click on hospital, and from my current position, it is searching for the nearest hospital. As you can see, Appleton Medical Center, uh, gives us the address, the phone number. If I had my phone out here and paired, I could simply call or otherwise I can hit start and that'll give me step-by-step -step instructions how to get there. By hitting the back button, I'm just going back to the prior menu. And the other way we can search for a point of interest is from a other city. So if you knew where you were going to be taking a trip and you could type in that specific city. Let's say we were going to visit uh, Milwaukee here in Wisconsin. So again, just narrowing down Milwaukee using the alphabet. So once I get enough in there, it already prompts me, so Milwaukee is up there. And so now, even though I'm in Appleton, Wisconsin, I can search for a, let's say, a exhibition center. And in Milwaukee, it looks like the Midwest Airline Center the Marcus Center Performing Arts, the Bradley Center. So again, just another way of searching for a point of interest. And again, just hitting the back button is taking me right back. Hopefully this video was helpful and we will try to get more out there in terms of audio functions. I'd really like to touch on the music registry along with pairing uh, some of the popular phones. Before we end, I would like to touch base on a couple of the shortcut buttons. I really enjoy using the central controller. It's almost like a mouse-like device. Uh, once you do get accustomed to it, it is very easy to use, almost like a computer mouse. Though we do have some shortcut buttons, as you will see right on the dash, you will see radio, disk, navigation, telephone, this is our mute button, system, that is how we'll get to the system settings up in the command display. So again, by hitting system, it takes me right there. And then we do have the phone end button and the phone send button. So talking about the radio button, as you will see, every time I do hit the radio button, it'll toggle from FM to AM to weather band to satellite radio. Every time I hit the disc button, that will make you toggle through all your non-radio sources. So for instance, I can go from my music registry to Bluetooth, to iPod, and to a CD. Again, six disc changer. To access the six disc changer, you do need to hit this disc button located here. And by hitting that, that'll prompt you It'll show you all the discs that you do have loaded in the vehicle. As you can see here, I do have five out of the six discs loaded. So I can eject any one of these or load any one of these. So for instance, number slot number one is empty. So if I wanted to load slot number one, I would simply depress on slot number one and it's gonna prompt me to insert disc. Again, navigation will take you right to the navigation screen and telephone will take you right to the telephone screen. These are some nice shortcuts to use. And as you will see, the keypad. The keypad not only can be used when you are in the telephone screen as a normal keypad, but when you're in your radio mode, for instance, if you're in the FM mode, now you do have one through zero, basically 10 presets for FM, if you're in AM, you do have 10 separate AM presets. And if you're in satellite radio, you do have 10 separate satellite radio presets. And if you are in the disk mode, buttons one through six will refer to the six different disks that you do have in.